Hi, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. So we're getting a little bit of a winter storm here. Three to four inches, 32 degrees. And look what I found. Everyone has opioid receptors in their nervous system. They're embedded in our neurons. They function to shut down or dampen our physical discomfort. They help with sleep, mood, appetite, memory, and our reproduction and fertility. The endocannabinoid system, or ECS, is a complex cell signaling system that was discovered in the early 1990s. The ECS has three core components, endocannabinoids, receptors, and enzymes. I'm going to talk about endocannabinoids and receptors today. I'll also talk a little about the use of opiates in treating chronic pain. This in no way is meant to convict you or make you feel bad, but I do hope it will make you think. Life is about choices, and there are our choices to make. Okay, here we go. Endocannabinoid receptors are found throughout the body and endocannabinoids bind to them to let the ECS know it's time to act. Two main endocannabinoid receptors are called CB1, found in the central nervous system, and CB2, found in the peripheral nervous system, especially immune cells. CB1 receptors are targeted by endocannabinoids to relieve pain, and CB2 receptors are targeted when our body is experiencing inflammation. These functions contribute to homeostasis, which provides stability in our body. So when we're in pain, it throws off our homeostasis, and the ECS is supposed to kick in to return us to our ideal function and keep our system stable. But in fibromyalgia patients, our brain's innate ability to relieve pain is dysregulated. One theory for the development of fibromyalgia, migraine, or IBS, is low endocannabinoid levels in the body, or ECS dysfunction, according to a 2016 study. I mean, it makes sense that if endocannabinoid function is decreased, a lowered pain threshold would be in motion, along with digestion, mood, and sleep. Endogenous cannabinoids are produced by our body, and two main players are called AEA and 2-AG. They're made as we need them, so levels change throughout the day. In fibromyalgia, the ECS is on high alert because of pain and other issues and releases endogenous opioids over a long period of time. So the system slows down and gets worse at being able to dampen our physical discomfort. And then on top of that, this gradual dysfunction also hinders the effects of prescription opioids, which in a typical patient could offer relief. In 2015, a study of long-term use of opioid treatment in fibromyalgia 
found that there was less improvement in symptoms than those taking other medications. Here's a quote. Although pain severity was reduced over time in all cohorts, opioid users showed less improvement in pain-related interference with daily living, functioning, depression, and insomnia, unquote. The findings suggested that little support for the long-term use of opioids in patients with fibromyalgia was shown. Another study in 2016 on opioid use in fibromyalgia patients resulted in the following, quote, in sum, at 12 months, among patients who had discontinued opioids or used them minimally, those with fibromyalgia had worse outcomes and were less likely to have discontinued because of pain improvement, unquote. So pain improved, but opioids didn't help once they quit, their pain increased. Another quote, among patients continuing chronic opioid therapy, pain and activity interference outcomes were worse than those of patients with minimal, no opioid use, and did not differ for those with fibromyalgia versus those with diverse other chronic conditions, unquote. So those who continue to use opiates were worse off than people who didn't take opiates. For me, that's significant. I know that over time, for me, my significant pain has decreased. There have been many reasons for that, for which I've shared on this channel. In 2020, a pilot study of just seven fibro patients was concluded, and researchers found reduced opioid receptor binding in the mid-cingulate cortex compared to healthy controls. So basically, the ECS was not performing appropriately in the first place. And so I guess the point is adding more opiates to an already dysfunctioning opioid system doesn't help. Opiates mimic pain relieving chemicals our body makes called opioid peptides. Like our endogenous cannabinoids, opiates bind to specific receptors in our brain and spinal cord to activate our pain relief system. Common opiates are hydrocodone, codeine, and there's a long list. Some are combined with acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, like Percocet, Ultraset, Vicodin, and Tylenol-3. In the medical community and in research, it's believed that opiates aren't an effective treatment strategy for fibromyalgia or possibly ME-CFS, but there isn't a lot of research on ME-CFS, but because of their overlapping hyperalgesia and allodynia, this suggestion makes sense. But it seems that people with fibromyalgia who take opiates state a different story. They say their pain levels are too high to function without them. So some healthcare providers do prescribe them. It's suggested that the placebo effect is at play and possibly they find relief from other overlapping pain conditions, which may be helping their fibro pain overall. Let me say, first and foremost, I'm not a supporter of using opiates to treat fibromyalgia pain. I think there are so many other ways you can treat your pain, both prescription and non-prescription. 
and here's why. An overdose can be fatal. You may find it hard to keep track of your last dose and take another and now you're at risk. That may sound naive, but unfortunately, I've known people from my college working days who succumb to this reality. Also, over time, you develop a tolerance and you need more to get the same effect. I mean, I've experienced this just with my fibromyalgia medication and have to switch it around for a while. And sometimes I'll go back to it sometime later. In addition, as a psychologist, I think we have so much to be grateful for and can learn to function and live a prosperous and happy, healthy life through gentle movements, deep breathing, and other alternative treatments. But what do you think? That's what matters to me. Obviously, it's your life that's being affected. I'm certainly not going to tell you what is right for you. But my second reason is addiction is a major risk factor. Does that mean I have never been prescribed an opiate for a condition? No, but it's taken for a short period of time and then that's it. So to keep from being subjected to addiction, take your medication as prescribed and do not alter the method. But research has shown that taking opioid medication for longer than five days will increase your odds of addiction. Lastly, in 2016, the Center for Disease Control issued guidelines for prescribing opioids for chronic pain to address the problems I just mentioned. I put a link to the updated 2022 guidelines. Most especially for me, research is showing that Opioid medication may lead to an increased sensitivity to pain called opioid-induced hyperalgesia. Quote, opioid-induced hyperalgesia is defined as a state of nociceptive sensitization caused by exposure to opioids. The condition is characterized by a paradoxical response whereby a patient receiving opioids for the treatment of pain could actually become more sensitive to certain painful stimuli, unquote. So what do you think of this topic? How do you feel about the research? Does this make sense? Now, I want you to go out there and have a truly great day. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. I'm going to talk about endocannabinoids. I'll also talk a little bit about the use of opioid. I mean, it makes sense that if endocannabinoid systems. I mean, it makes sense that if endocannabinoid function is discreet. I did it again. They are me. Mm. The snow distracted me. No oibia. No oibia. Mm. But it seems that Opiates stare from over, from over.